Fun, do you know that I am fond of fondue? I recently asked all 138 of my Instagram followers what they wanted to see on my channel in the coming weeks while I was doing my part in social distancing during San Francisco shelter in place. And two whole people said fondue. It turns out, last October, I got to spend some time in the Swiss Alps. Specifically, the birthplace and home of Gruyere cheese, the town of Gruyere. Not only did I get to learn about and eat copious amounts of Gruyere cheese, but I also experienced the true delight of Swiss fondue. I mean, just, just look. Look at this. It was to die for. But being the picky, texture-oriented cheese girl that I am, I noticed that when I neglected to stir the fondue pot, which I did to get, this perfect shot, the fats from the cheese would start to flow to the top, meaning that it wasn't perfectly emulsified. So let's talk science. This fondue, I'm just gonna roll the clip again because it's so damn good, was, according to those who served it to me in Gruyere, made simply with butter, a blend of Gruyere and Emmentaler cheeses, and white wine. White wine is a source of both flavor and something called tartaric acid, which acts as an emulsifier by altering the structure of casein proteins in the cheese, allowing them to better bond to fat. With a little more research, I learned that cornstarch is also typically a common ingredient here. Its purpose is to stabilize and further strengthen the emulsion while thickening the fondue. But, assuming you watched my videos, Remember how in the grilled cheese episode I used sodium citrate to emulsify the proteins and fats of cheddar cheese to create perfect meltability? I think I can use this method here. To test, I'm going to make two small batch fondues. One mimicking the one I ate in Switzerland, and one with a little added sodium citrate. Let's discover the true difference between tartaric acid and sodium citrate. So for these recipes, I'm going to start by grating my cheese. For this, I'm using a mix of Gruyere and Comte cheeses. I know, I know, in these times I couldn't find an Emmentaler at the grocery store and I'm okay with that. Comte has a very similar vibe. I'm also using the Siri Seats method, which I've linked below. We'll start by heating our butter and wine. The correct ratio of wine to cheese is one cup to one pound, but since I'm using half a pound of cheese per batch, half a cup of wine it is, along with half a tablespoon of butter. Simple ratios here. I'll do this for both batches. For the traditional batch, I'll first toss my cheese in half a tablespoon of cornstarch and then gradually melt it into the fondue pot. For the sodium citrate batch, I'll dissolve half a teaspoon of sodium citrate in the warm wine and butter mixture and then gradually add my cheese without cornstarch. Once we're close to melted on both, I'll hit them with an immersion blender to ensure we're perfectly emulsified. I'll then add a little bit of salt and pepper and that's literally it. Time to taste test with some bread we baked last night. Okay, so before we do a true taste test, it wouldn't be cheese with leaves without a little bit of history, right? Fondue is derived from the French word fondre, which means to melt, and finds its origins in 18th century Switzerland. Alpine farmers developed this recipe as a means to use all of their edible resources in the winter. Stale bread, wine, and leftover cheese were staples of any modest Alpine home. And stale bread dipped in fondue is good. Fondue was actually popularized in the 1930s by the Swiss Cheese Union in a campaign to promote Swiss cheese consumption throughout Switzerland. And when World War II ended, the Swiss Cheese Union used fondue as a symbol of and I quote from Alpenwild, of Swiss unity and national identity. Fondue was first introduced to the States in 1964 at the New York World Fair. Honestly, the emulsion has held up pretty darn good. It's been sitting out for a long time and it hasn't really separated. Here is the fondue that I made with sodium citrate. Oh, oh. So this one actually took me two attempts. The first time I thought that I used too much liquid because I completely underestimated the thickening power of sodium citrate. This time it looks like I used not enough liquid. So I'm gonna have to either find the right ratio for this or stick to this. But in all honesty, I don't think you need sodium citrate for this recipe. Hmm. <laughs> the flavor is there, but the texture is not. I ran out of cheese, unfortunately, but unless I can go back and redo this recipe, I think it's the wine and cornstarch that wins this round. Now, please enjoy this clip of me being absolutely enamored by Alpine cows. Uh, y'all. <laughs> Hi, cheese. Oh, thank you. You are all so handsome. Oh, look at that ass. 